hello welcome back this is the african humanist i'm back with this video and the title is 10 reasons why africans are leaving christianity there's been lots of um you know lots of things in the news about religion about the eels of religion a lot of people are starting to walk away from uh, religion altogether but today i'm choosing to talk about 10 reasons why africans are leaving christianity now people who lack a belief system are growing rapidly the numbers are growing um so this can actually apply to not just christians it can apply to any religion at all so people and it could apply to any race so it could apply to you know just about anybody who is leaving any form of religion but it's it's quite specific to people who are who identify as africans and are leaving the um, the christian religion so come with me let's let's do this okay so number one one reason why africans are leaving christianity is christianity is a religion by the slave master this was a religion that was brought to us by um missionaries who came colonized africa brought with them the bible in their minds they were doing us a a good thing they thought that we were you know doing wrong by serving you know the african traditional worship the things that they served you know they served the deities that they served they they thought hmm, let's go and introduce our one to them and they came with hope oh came with hope of heaven hope of you know jesus christ being the savior they came with and in essence made us leave our african traditions leave our the deities that we worshipped you know so deities like ifa ogun just lots of different um deities i am no specialist in those deities i've got no clue but i'm just going to talk about you know just this but if you would like to know more about um so the history of some of the african traditions you know yeah let me know i could do some investigation and find out what these were yeah so they came with their 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 religion and for how many centuries for how many years we have adopted the religion of the slave master they didn't stop at just being slave masters they also were colonizers they colonized africa and you know we lost our identity in essence because now as a black person who served your and now you are told that your belief is you know wrong and now you have to adopt the belief of this man who has come to come and take over your land and in some cases people were beaten to accept the religion you know the slave master used this religion to try and subdue the slave in the bible ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 to 9 5 to 9 says slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart just as you would obey christ 
Obey them, not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he is both master and yours. Since you know that he who is both the master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. I, I don't know, just have issues with that because... A lot of slaves will suffer. If we went with this ideology, a lot of slaves will suffer here on earth and still end up in hell if they don't believe. It's just... So, some Christians are starting to wake up and realize that a religion that was forced down our throats, how is that supposed to help us? How is that supposed to save us? A religion that the slave master gave to you how will that religion then save you? They use that to subdue you and to take over. I don't want to get too, you know, divisive with this, but just saying the reasons why Christians are, you know, people are, are leaving the Christian religion. Africans. Another reason why Africans are stepping away from the Christian religion is number two you save money by leaving the religion <laughs> yes you don't have to pay tithes anymore one ten no number two you you get to have more time to spend at work i remember someone telling me I don't go to work on Sunday because I have to go to church. In the country we are living, you get more for working on Sunday. Yeah, you get you get more. But a lot of people, because they're Christians, it's the Sabbath day. They don't ah no, they cannot worship on a Sunday. And so they they cannot go to no they can't go to work on a Sunday so they've got to be in church so they're not making money on Sunday. But if you when you are, when you leave that religion and you have to go to work on Sunday you happily go because you're earning more the incentive is there to go. And on a Sunday you get more time to spend with your family with your loved ones you know. So can you imagine in a month you don't have to pay one tenth of your salary you don't have to pay ta um, offerings you don't have to pay building funds for the church you don't have to pay um, pastors pastors prophets offering some places call it prophet offering in some places they call it uh, okay yeah some um, one lady she said um, you have to pay counseling offering can you imagine if you didn't go to these places anymore you don't pay on it, any of these and guess what you do with your money you get to save your money you get to keep your money or invest your money in other things and even if you want to spend on yourself at least you see what you're spending your money on you don't have to spend it on some other man or woman who hasn't worked at all for your money you've gone out there saved your money and you come and go and spend it well, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why Africans are leaving. Number three, you can focus on your individuality, not what any religion tells you to be. So the religion tells you you've got to be a certain way. You've got to live by Ten Commandments. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. And... Your individuality gets lost along the way. But when that's when that's when that's done away with, 
you can find yourself again. What are the things that I love? What are the things that gives me pleasure? What are the things that I, um, you know, now you start to see things the way you should see them because the mask of religion is taken off. Now you start to focus inward and think, what are the things that interest me? Now that I, I don't have to go to church, now that I don't have to worship any deity, now you start to think on the inside. You get more time to spend for yourself and find yourself again. It's a journey. We never stop finding ourselves. So, but the religion tells you, you got to do this, you got to do that. You, thou must not do this. Thou must not. Thou must not. Thou must not. You know, but when you find yourself, there's a sense of fulfillment. When you have that individuality, there's a sense of fulfillment. There's a sense of, I'm doing this not because any book tells me to. I'm doing this not because any pastor tells me to. I'm doing it because I want to do it. I'm doing it because I find pleasure in it. So it's a it's a it's a thing of indi you know it's an individual thing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful when you can have that individuality. Number four. You are not going to hell. It doesn't exist. That's one of the reasons why people are walking away. Christianity is a religion of fear. If you do not believe, then when you die, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, judgment. Can you imagine not believing that stuff anymore? And that fear of judgment is taken away. What a relief. Now that's why some people are, are saying, enough. I'm walking away from this stuff. I cannot live my life constantly feeling like I am going to be judged. Constantly feeling like there's a weight over my shoulders. And not fearing hell. If you can conquer the fear of hell, you can conquer so many things. Another thing, another reason is less time is spent on irrelevant things. Like spending five hours in church when you can use that time to be productive. Some people on a Sunday are in church five, six hours, seven maybe. Yes, yes, believe me when I tell you. Some people go to church. Some churches have to do first service, second service, third service. I mean, there was one church I used to go to in Nigeria. They used to have five services on a Sunday. Five. Five services. And some workers were expected to stay for all five. So can you imagine on a Sunday you wake up, then you can sleep however much you like. And on Sunday you wake up, you can go and do exercise. You can meditate. You can learn a new skill. It could just be time to just sit the kids around. Let's see your homework. What have you got to do? You know, time to discuss with your mate, with your partner, with your spouse. Time to sit down and just think about you and think about your loved ones. It could be time to just sit down and just sort out documents. It could be time to just sit and, you know, do chores around the house that you couldn't necessarily do during the week. It could just be time to just get away from everything. But one thing is, you are not spending time doing unnecessary activities in the church. Sometimes you're in the church not because you want to be there, but because there's an obligation that you have to be there. But that's taken away from you. 
Another reason is it makes you see things for what they truly are. There's no more deception and no more make-believe. You don't see things as a myth anymore. These are some of the reasons why some people leave Christianity. You, you, you see things for what they really are. You realize some of these things don't make any sense. And if it's not making any sense, why believe in it? Why carry on the, the, the sham? Why carry on the charade? Why? You see some people on a Sunday carry the biggest Bible possible. The biggest on a Sunday. But from Monday to Saturday, they're the worst when it comes to character. They're the worst when it comes to attitude. They're the worst when it comes to, you know, just being a, a, a moral human being. But walking away from the religion allows people to see things for what they really are. Sometimes it's not as hard. It's not that difficult. It's not that complicated. Someone said, or some people say, you need to see things with spiritual lenses. Sometimes just see it for what it is. A typical example is someone is sick. That's some Africans. This is what they believe. Someone is sick. And they start thinking that someone in the village is the one who is the cause of their ailment when it's just a simple stomach bug just a simple some pastors will make the the the, the follower feel that it is their mother who's done something in the coven that has made them no more fairy tales no more make-believe no more you see things when you're ill Nobody's doing you. Nobody's after you. Just go straight to seek. Go and seek medical attention. You see things for what they really are. So how many have we done? Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. <clears throat> Number eight now. It allows you to see each individual as a human like yourself, not one who is going to hell. There's no us and them, you know, I'm saved. They're not. Because the Bible tells you not to be unequally yoked with someone who doesn't believe what you believe. It tells you not to have any dealings with those people. So it's an us and them. I'm saved. They're not. So if, you know, and some people just want to be accepting of human race altogether. Whether white, whether black, whether brown, whatever. No, there's no tribalism. There's no, um, you know, special treatment for not nothing whatsoever you look at your fellow human and accept them you don't think that they're after you you don't think that they're going to hell you don't think that they're going to come and you know um uh, take you away from your religion no you accept them for who they are the 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 human that they are just like yourself and you treat them the way you would want to be treated that's number eight. Number nine. <clears throat> sexuality and acceptance of people as they are. Not what they do in their bedrooms. Christianity is a very... Um, it's so anti, anti what you do in your bedroom. <laughs> yes. Some Christians don't believe that you should 
be engaging in some sexual positions. Mm -hmm. There are some Christians that don't believe in oral sex. There are some Christians that don't believe in, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be too graphic in this um, particular video. But I will come back, I will talk about Christianity and sex. That's going to be one of the topic I'm going to talk about. Yes. There are some Christians that don't believe. In fact, some Christians believe that you have to pray before you have sex. Some Christians believe, okay? The, the, the normal belief with Christians is when you're fasting, sex is out. It's off. And then... There are no nuances with Christianity. There's no, you know, being bisexual, being gay, being however you identify. Mm -mm. You've, you've got to be straight. You're either female or male. And the two come together. There are no nuances. <laughs> but we all know that that's not how life the the human the, the 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 world doesn't work like that there are nuances there are differences there are people who are by you know by by gendered You've got two genders in one so what you know how does how does christianity account for those people it puts them in two different boxes and that's it there's no in betweens but when you walk away you can be accepting however you come across however you identify whether you're bisexual asexual um gay lesbian lgbtqi everything you can just live your life like you want to. And you see, some of these things are in phases. They're in, there's no one rule and say it has to be. You can, 10 years ago, you can identify as gay. And 10 years later, identify, I'm not gay. That's not anybody's business. Why should your religion be interested in what you do? inside your bedroom it's nobody's business if you're not hurting the next man as long as you're seeking consent as long as you you know you're not taking your mate for granted as long as you're not um, imposing on the other person then whose whose business is it who nobody's and that's one of the reasons and finally, you do not need a savior. That's one of the reasons why people are leaving. They say, mm -mm. let me be my own savior. Let me be my own master. Let me be, let me be the, the one who makes the decisions. I don't need a savior. Some people will come and say, oh, but you're going to hell if you don't believe. Which hell? I might not be going to your hell, but what about you? The religions that you don't believe, you're going to their hells too. So you mean on top of living the whole Christian life, deny yourself of wearing earrings, deny yourself of wearing the chains, uh, trousers, you know, tying your head. In fact, some religions don't believe. You see this hairstyle I've got on? Some some Christians don't believe you should do, you know, dreads. No, no, no. Dreads are not allowed in, in some sects of Christianity. Yes. When I started my locks, I was told not to do locks because some Christians frown on locks in your hair. Yes, I'm telling you. You don't need a savior be you do you live your life 
And finally, you are not alone. If you're deconverting, if you're leaving the religion, you are not alone. There are lots of people who are thinking about this thing every day. Some can voice out, some cannot. There are lots of support groups on Instagram, on Facebook, on, um, you know, there's, um, I will leave some links in the description if you are walking away. But listen, if it is not conducive to leave the religion just yet, so if you're dependent on the people for money, finances, and you can't leave, you cannot, you know, be openly, um, um, you know, you can't openly tell them that you're leaving, just please don't, you know, just until it's safe to do so. The last thing you want is to um, have any more problems on top of the problems of your lack of belief, you know. So I will leave some links, yeah, to um, organizations that can help. If you're deconverting and even if you haven't deconverted you have questions that you want to ask you know there's agencies that can help that can answer your questions and just listen to you okay or you can just go in your local environment and find organizations for unbelievers yeah there are organizations out there you might think they're not but they are out there you are not alone on this journey yeah so thank you very much i'm the african humanist i'll be back again with another video